How do you find hotspots? Okay. One of the keys to finding hotspots is to look for areas that are going to be uh, having a rising population uh, or areas that are experiencing what I call urban renewal. So an example of that might be St Kilda in Melbourne or in Sydney, Alexandria. Areas that are reasonably close to the city, not too far, and they've had sort of an industrial feel or a, a kind of a, a poorer feel to them, but now they're being gentrified and they're really coming of age. Another thing to look for is the types of people that are moving in there, Gen Y and Gen X. These are the people that are looking for smaller size homes, you know, areas that don't need to uh, mow lawns, areas where you've got balconies and, and great lifestyle appeal. Um, that's the, one of the common things to look for there. Also look for affordability, areas that have a good mix of housing. You've actually got to get out there and actually talk to the locals and find out what is it that attracts people to live in the local area. You'll need to compare the median prices of those adjacent suburbs. One I love to do is the, what I call the ripple effect there. So if you can't afford to buy in a, a particular suburb, look at the ripple effect like a pebble in a pond and just look at the suburbs adjacent to that. So as you start doing this, you'll start to see that buying a property and doing the research doesn't happen overnight. There's a real process you've got to follow. So I talked about a specific research tool. So I want to talk about a way that you can shortcut some of your research here. Now in Australia there's over 15,000 suburbs to choose from. So it can be very, very overwhelming deciding which property do I choose. But there's a, a new tool that uh, we're starting to use and which we've got uh, some excellent results with our clients for, which looks at eight key market indicators. And what it does, it analyzes using a multi-criteria analysis, analyzes those, those indicators into a single score out of 42. So we might be able to take, say, uh, a suburb like Footscray or Flemington or St Kilda and be able to give that a score out of 42. The example here is a suburb in the ACT um, where we look at days on market, average vendor discounting, auction clearance rates, stock on market, the number, the, the internet demand, vacancy rates and the ratio of owner-occupier to investor in the suburb. And what this score is called, it's called the DSR score, Demand Supply Ratio Score. And it's a very accurate predictor of short-term capital growth in the next three years. So what it can do for you is it can very quickly analyse for you a handful of suburbs that you can then go and do a lot of further research on. So as part of the show, what we're actually doing is offering a free access to this kind of data for the first time. We've never done this before as part of a show. But what you can do, you can just, yes, if you grab your phone out of your pocket, and you can just SMS your first name and your email address to that number there, 0419 418 993. So for example, um, you just put your first name, rich, comma, rich at propertybuyer.com.au, and we'll give you a copy of that data for free. So it's just a great way in which you can, can then start to research those suburbs. Now the guy who um, designed this, particular, the vendor that designed this has allowed us to give this as a, as a free sample today at the show. Um, he's used it himself and he's tripled the value of some of the properties he's bought in the last three years. So he's done extremely well. But that's not all. You can't just look at the suburb. The thing you've got to do after that is ground truth. I'll put the number up again at the end, by the way. So it's one thing to do is to do some desktop research, but the next thing you've got to do is to get a feel or, or understand the vibe of the place. Um, that famous line in the castle, you know, the vibe of the thing. But uh, yeah, find out what makes the place tick. Um, find out from the locals why they want to live there. Because when you ring up a selling agent, the selling agent might say, Rich, you know, there's no traffic noise here. So what do I do? I go and visit the property, stand there in peak hour for five minutes and listen to the traffic noise. And if I hear that the traffic noise is, is terrible, then I'm not going to buy it from my client. The other thing you can do if you're going to buy in a regional area is talk to the local council, particularly the regional economic development office. There are offices, they're a font of knowledge, those guys. So we have ground truth. The next thing we've got to do is get out there and research. You're going to need to look at 50 to 100 properties in the areas that you're going to be searching in. You've got to uh, keep extensive notes, take a lot of notes to uh, 
identify the properties that are worth looking at. And I'll put a pair of shoes there just to show you, look, it is hard work. You know, you are going to wear out a couple of shoes doing this kind of exercise. And there isn't a shortcut to ground truth, and I can tell you that much. So once you've started researching, then you're going to start compiling a list, and you're going to start refining your criteria. So your key criteria is really going to start to, to stand out to you. And while you're doing that, um, you might need to consider the broader market conditions, because the conditions, interest rates could go up or down, there could be some big infrastructure announcement, uh, and that can happen as well. Rule number six, create a short list. Okay, so you've got your identified your suburbs, you've, uh, you've gone out there, you've looked at at least 50 properties, now you've got to cull your list down to three or five. Now this is really hard, because you're going to start seeing opportunities all over the place. You've got to get really, really ruthless here and rank the, your, your, your properties in order and get down to just three, or, three to five that you're going to be making offers on. And understand that your research is time sensitive. You know, there's competition out there amongst investors. The good deals go quickly. So just understand that, uh, that, that the good deals don't last, sit around forever. Seventh thing you've got to do is appraise the value. <laughs>